Hello, I'm Eli Stacy, and today I'd like to show you the different ways of creating playlists in the Slow Mo application. We'll start with how to add clips, then how to edit them once in the playlist, and finish with the different ways of controlling playout. Let's get started. Before we can build our playlist, we first need to create our clips and cues. If you'd like to learn how to do that, we have a video covering the different ways of creating them in the slow-mo application. To put together a playlist, the first thing that we'll need to do is go over to our clips bin and select which clips we want to add to our playlist. We can do that by pressing select and then going through our clips and selecting the angles that we want. So I'm going to choose uh, a few from this clip, a few from this clip, and maybe some from here. Uh, then below that, we see add to playlist or insert to playlist. I'm going to just do add, and I see that I have these six elements added to my playlist here. Uh, from here, I can preview that if I want to go through and look at any individual clip that I've added to make sure that they're right. Now let's go to my cues bin where I want to add one of my cues to a point in the middle of my playlist. So what I can do is I can select my cue point, and then on my playlist, I select where I want to put it, and I do that by selecting the clip that I want uh, my cue point to be before, so it'll be my cue point, and then the clip that I've selected. Once I have that selected here, I go up, and once it's selected, I do insert in playlist. And we see that added right above the clip that we had selected, and if I were to preview that, that's the angle that I created for my cue point. Another unique way of adding a clip to a playlist is if I were to go through and during some time of the action, I were to mark in, and then I wait for any sort of action to take place. And I get to mark a new in point so it updates. Can keep on doing that. And then, all right, he's making the shot. Perfect, we mark out. And instead of pressing save, what I'm gonna do is go down to the bottom and press add. From here, I can select which camera angle I want to add to my playlist. In this case, I'm just going to do the fifth camera angle. And now we see at the bottom, I see the fifth camera angle, 118.5, and 0.5 is the camera angle. Another powerful way of adding clips to a playlist is if I were to mark in, perfect, he almost tried to make the shot, mark out, and impress, instead of pressing insert or add, I go and press select. Then from here, I can select which camera angles I want to add in which order. So I'm gonna do the fifth camera angle, and let's do the wide after that as well. And then I do add to playlist. Because I created a clip, it opens up the clip properties where I can add certain keywords if there are any uh, of note. Then if I go to the bottom, I see that I have that clip created. So I'm gonna preview it and press play. I can see he tried to make the shot. And then I get a second camera angle of that same action. Another way to add elements to the playlist is actually by referencing elements already in the playlist. So if we were to preview this camera angle, we see that there was a three point being made, but I don't have any other camera angles for that action. So what I can do is if I were to, again, put it to preview, and then sync to preview so I can get a good look at the different angles that were available for that action. If I were to select that clip in the playlist bin, and then if I go down and press insert, I can select any one of my camera angles to add before this clip and it'll have the same mark in and out point. So I'm gonna go through and press this camera angle and I see that that was added right before the one that we had selected. So I can now preview that. I see that they're at the exact same point in time. Now if I were to play from that point, I'll see that I have my first camera angle and then it'll go to my second. Now that I've added a number of clips to my playlist, let's go in and see how we can edit those elements. There are many ways that you can edit elements already in a playlist. Probably one of the most important is being able to adjust the in and out point for that clip. One of the things that you might have noticed is that when I added one of my marked cue points in time, it actually, because it doesn't have an in or out point, it's 10 seconds in length, because I've pre-programmed the system to mark five seconds before and five seconds after if adding to a playlist. But in some cases, that's just, just far too long. So what I can go through, and I see that this clip is 10 seconds in length. And from here, what I can actually do is I can scrub through 
wait for any action to take place uh, because again, there was a lot of buildup. So it seems like this is right around the beginning and then I can mark a new endpoint. Then I can go through and uh, after the shot was taken, I'm gonna mark a new out point. And so now instead of that clip being 10 seconds, it's now three seconds. Another thing that I can do in, in regards to marking in or out is if I were to go to another clip that's perhaps too short, I can go through and say, okay, that's about where it ends, but maybe I want a little bit more time uh, building up to that. I wanna see how we got there. What I can do is if I go to the bottom and press extend, I can go past where my endpoint is. So now I can get much more buildup and mark an endpoint. And so now from that clip being just over two seconds, it's now four seconds. So for it to play it out, I can see that it's now much longer. Another option for changing elements in my playlist is if I'm going through there and I find an angle that I don't necessarily like very much, what I can do is I can actually just change the angle while keeping the same in and out points. So for instance, in this clip, it's not a very good angle. Uh, the referee is blocking the shot. Uh, I know there's a better one. So I can go down to the bottom and press change angle. Then from here, it jumps my multi-viewer back to that point in time where I can see all the different angles. And from here, I can select a new one, such as my wide. Then from here, I can preview that and play it out. And I now have the same in and out point, but from a different angle. Another way that you can edit your playlist is by moving clips either to another playlist or to a different spot within the playlist. To move it to another playlist, all we need to do is go to our playlist bin, and then we can select, you know, a few clips by tapping on the orange section, and then we go and press copy. That puts it to this clipboard at the bottom right, and once it's there, I can go to a new playlist, select that clipboard, and press add to playlist, and it adds those five elements to the playlist. What I can also do is if I go back to my original playlist, and say I want to move elements within the playlist. So I have these one-on-one -on -one eight clips, I have two of them. So I wanna move that to somewhere in the middle of my playlist. All I need to do is select those two items, actually go down to the bottom and press delete. And what that'll do is it acts like a cut and it puts it into the clipboard, not just deleting it. And then from here, I can go in and say, you know, before my one 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 three clip, I can select it, have make sure both of these are selected at the same time. I then press insert into playlist and it puts those two clips right before the one I had selected. Once I'm happy with the angles of my clips and their in and out points, what I can actually do is go through and edit the play speed and transitions for the entire playlist. To do that, I go and select one of the elements in my playlist and go to the top and press edit. From here, it'll open up the playlist item properties window where I can first change the video transition. So instead of it being two frames as a mix, I can also do a cut. But if I were to do a mix, I want that to be a 10 frame mix. And then if I go to my playlist audio transition, I want it to match, so I'm gonna set it at 10. And then for my default play speed, it's going to play the clip out at by default 100%, but in this case, I want it to be playing out at 80%. I can also change the audio preset, but I'm going to make it so that it keeps whatever is already there. And then I can apply this to each individual clip if I want certain clips to be playing out at a slower speed than another, or I can apply this to the entire playlist, which I'll do. Then if I go to my playlist bin, I see that it's playing out at 80%. I can see the right of the, uh, of the length of the clip. And then all the way to the right, I can see that my video mix is at 10 frames, as well as my audio mix, and that's applied to all of the elements in my playlist. So if I were to preview my playlist and press play, I see that it's playing out at 80% at the bottom, and I can also see that there's a 10 frame mix in between each of the clips. Now that we're happy with the editing of the playlist, let's see the different ways that we can play it out. To take a playlist to program, all I need to do is either tap on the green section of the playlist bin, or the green section of the clip that you want to start your playlist on. Then from here, I can tap on it to send it to my program window. And then from here to start my playout, all I need to do is press play and it'll start playing out at 80% as we said before. And I can see the countdown of the individual clip as well as the entire playlist and the number clip that we're on. So right now we're on three out of 10. 
From here, if I want to skip a certain clip, all I need to do is press next, and it'll automatically transition to the next clip. What I can also do is if I want to skip multiple clips, I can just go to my playlist and preview one that's maybe a few ahead, put into my preview window and tap on it, and it'll automatically transition that clip, skipping the ones before. Also, anytime throughout my playlist, if I want to change the play speed of an individual clip, my playout control is still available. So in this clip, if I want to set it to 30%, it'll play the rest of this clip out at 30%. And then when it goes to the next clip, it'll start playing it out at the predefined 80%. I hope this has taught you a few new ways to create more complex playlists in the Slow-Mo application. If you'd like to learn more about the Slow-Mo application or the VBOX platform, there's information on our website. Thank you.